Hey folks, this is Ben Yussel. How's it going? Um, just a quick video here. It's quite a bit of my mind. I know. I had an early morning. Not too early morning. It's a morning rehearsal. Wasn't too happy to go to, but it wasn't all that bad. It's not always very enjoyable, though, when you're performing something that you've played before and everything you've played before. And you just feel like you're going through the motions, but you have to be there because you're committed to be one of the orchestra members, right? Of course, if you're paid, you need to be there for sure. Gosh. But, um, yeah, so anyway, whatever. Orchestra Blues. So I'm, I'm making this video, and I'm not going to talk necessarily about which videos I'm commenting on or which channel I'm commenting on in this case because I really actually liked the lady, the woman that was talking about this stuff and she had some some decent points, she had some good points and uh, there's more than one person that's talking about stuff on this particular YouTube channel so I I really don't want to, to um, cr critique this channel very much but I'm just going to say a few things about... Um, Piano, and not just piano, but other things that I do as far as music and teaching and the whole, the whole process behind, uh, evaluating your own ability level on different things and music and evaluating others' ability levels to the extent that you can because a lot of times you can't see everything and yeah, you often can't see everything going on with someone else. So it's just teachers can actually see a lot of things going on with students, but even teachers can't see 100% of what's going on. Okay. Well, let's just talk about the content of what this, this channel is talking about, this this one video. What do, you know? If you think about it, just stop and think for a moment how many different techniques there are on just the piano how many different techniques there are in each other instrument and how many different instruments there are. Um, also, uh, knowledge of what's been written for each instrument and, and for the orchestra and for piano, anything, right? There's the knowledge of the music itself. There's the musicality that goes into uh, musical intelligence. When do you, if it's not written in the score, when do you gradually get Faster or slower, or louder or softer, or rubato tempo, or uh, reading something that has slurs with staccato and <laughs> um, other markings, staccatissimo versus portamento, and, um, you know, various terms that used, are used to describe either something. Tempo wise, or expressive marking, or, um, and you have knowledge of scales and chords and harmonies, and harmonic progressions and tonality, and time signatures and rhythms, uh, meters, and you have polyrhythms, and you have polymeters, and you have, <laughs> you have free meter, and you have an atonality and polytonality, and polyphony, and you have counterpoint, and you have Compositional abilities, perfect pitch, ear training, and, uh, or whatever. And you have, uh, a natural knack for just, uh, hearing melodies in your head or hearing harmonic progressions with melodies. You can write things faster or you, uh, have explored crazier harmonic progressions or you know any more so you can write something that sounds pretty Pretty noteworthy, but is really kind of different, a little better, whatever. Different kinds of styles, different kinds of rhythms, different kinds of cultures, different kinds of um, ways of writing. Microtonality, Iranian music, world music, Chinese music, Indian music. Uh, you know, <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg. You have a, you have a company mental ability, or you know, uh, improvisation, all the jazz skills. You have. Uh, 
rock music and all the different types of music outside of jazz, rock, and classical music. You have country music and folk music. You have uh, finger just technique and abilities and speed and virtuosity and, and strength and coordination and left and right hands. And, and then on the piano, you've, you know, gonna mention all these, these techniques and things, but, uh, I don't even know if I can get through all the, everything I'm thinking of, with all the different types of musical abilities. And then you have things that are more related to, say, uh, intonation and wind instruments and strings, vibrato and, different kinds of vibrato used for wind instruments and on a horn there's lip trills and there's you know brass there's double tonguing and triple tonguing and there's multiphonics and um, a lot of these things apply to flute as well and you have other things you could do like oh, I don't know flutter tonguing and stuff which is not hard but you know I just get used to Spanish rolled R all these different things all these if you just talk about the piano things just the piano things that's, there's still a heck of a lot of different kinds of skills involved. So I responded to this lady's video. She's a piano teacher, a pianist, you know, whatever. Makes a lot of great quality music videos, a lot of great quality videos on YouTube. And I responded to her, her thoughts on what makes an intermediate pianist, an intermediate pianist, right? What, what defines an intermediate level of piano playing. I just told her, I was like, you know, it's not really just a question of where someone's at with their knowledge of music theory or scales or keys or chords or whatever. It's it's not really that specific. It really isn't. And I, I was I'm feeling pretty strong about this, but I knew where she was coming from. You know, I, I actually studied, I took the piano lessons when I was starting with, I was eight years old. My mom said, you're doing piano lessons. So I did piano lessons. And we, I worked on the Bastion method with my first piano teacher. And that's what we did. We, we worked on a lot of scales. That's what we did. We worked a lot on scale. I mean, man, man alive. Let me tell you, I, we worked on scales every single week. We we're working on a scale in some form, some form or another. We we're working on scales. Um, scales are going through my mind, um, mastering them, memorizing them. And we did all the other things, other kinds of things like technique, well, little other things here and there um, in, our, in our technique book, but a lot of it was scale-oriented. And then we did some theory, a little bit of theory, and some, some tunes, right, the different pieces. The Bastion Piano Method, which I'm not going to talk about too much in this video, um, does emphasize scales and keys. And so this is a perfect method I think this other lady might be referring to when re regarding intermediates that intermediates need to have a mastery of uh, these major scales. And like she mentioned some other things. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But the fact of the matter is is that most methods, most piano methods don't operate quite that way. And you still, you have a number, I would say probably the majority of piano students, a majority that don't have a full mastery of all the major scales, and all the keys. Certainly not all the minor scales, and the three different types of minor scales in every key. That's that's definitely not the case for a lot of intermediate level pianists. It just isn't. It's not. Um, I think it's a great thing to have a higher degree of mastery of scales at a younger age or at a younger an earlier point in someone's piano progression. I think that's a great thing, but I, I don't think it was a big, it's a huge, huge, huge deal. It's probably one of the top three biggest things going on with the Bastion Piano Series and uh, Robert Pace methods and I think Brim Hall method, these earlier methods that preceded the Bastion method. And that's, that's what I was, again, that's what I was trained on when I was starting out on piano. So this is, this is something that's very familiar to me, this train of thought. But again, even though I'm, I'm, I, I was very strong in music theory and I excelled in the, in the Bastion method, um, I don't insist that all my students are the same way. That most of my students are not theory buffs like me. But they have fast fingers and they can read music well in the staff and they can work on harder repertoire. Well, at least at least music that's written, actually written for the piano by classical composers, that's easier or like at an intermediate level, right? But it's not quite 
advanced level, right? Or beyond. But um, a lot of my students don't have a full mastery of the scales. Or the basic scales, right? Yet. And that's okay. Sometimes, um, in piano at least, right? Talking about piano. It's not really, you can't really expect a pianist to have a full mastery of these, these things. The, all the major scales and all the minor scales in all three forms, as well as the church modes, right? And all the basic types of chords plus a lot of the seventh chords. Maybe even a few others as well. You can't expect someone to have a full mastery of all that, really, until they're actually almost at an advanced level. Now, certainly, I would describe an advanced pianist as someone who knows all that stuff. Unless, again, unless they've been playing by ear. They just have a growing technique, right? And those guys, a lot of these, I know a lot of pianists. There's a lot of pianists out there that don't read music. They don't understand keys and scales and key signatures and stuff. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's a, it's a re- very real thing out there. So, so what, what, what distinguishes again, a, a beginner from an intermediate, from an advanced, from a pro or anything in between these, these abilities? So it's, it's something that, you know, you can say it's one, it's all these things, but when push comes to shove, it's, um, it's, you're talking about sometimes different, a different kind of musician with these different kinds of skills. Ultimately, um, but yeah, like you could totally you could have pianists that don't have any knowledge of reading music or music theory. Yes, that's that's I know it's very different. But <laughs> would you describe them as being a beginner? No, not if they were really really good. Of course not. Would you describe them as an intermediate if they were beyond that point and they're Physical skill? No. How about advanced level? If they're beyond that point, they're beyond that point. But they still can't read music, a lot of these pianists. It's a, it's like apples and oranges. It's like jazz, almost like a jazz pianist and a classical. It's even, it's even a bigger difference than cla- jazz and classical pianists. Those pianists that can read music and those that can't. But you can't say that someone who can't read music is a beginner, intermediate, or advanced even when they're closer to professional level. Or when they're, when they've played for a number of years and they have phenomenal technique and all that stuff. You can't say that. So it just means different things to different people. And it's, there's different kinds of musical skills and there's different kinds of musicians. And it's just, just that's, that's the way it is. And of course, I've talked about it in my, some of my other videos, by the way, about how I don't, uh, you know, I sometimes get frustrated with, um, certain kinds of music that's really just cheap to me. There's, there's, obviously, it does not take very much skill. But someone can also make the argument that there's some kinds of musical skills that are just, we don't value very much. And I'll give some things the benefit of the doubt. I still, though, believe that it's a very different thing to consider someone a musician who's really more of an entertainer. Bless his heart, Kanye West is nothing like a professional classical musician. Absolutely nothing like someone like that whatsoever. There's no comparison. But Kanye is good at entertaining. And he's good at kind of some dance moves, maybe. He's pretty athletic and I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's just, but I don't really value him as a musician. I tend to think he's a, a decent guy. Or he has his foibles, but he's certainly not a disreputable person. He's a decent guy, right? But he's not Lang Lang. He's not Lang Lang, right? We, we know this. We, it doesn't need to be, well, it's, it's, there's a humorous side to what I'm talking about too, sure. But, or Yo Yo Ma. There's all these other musicians that are, you know, Wynton Marsalis. Right? I don't know. Herbie Hancock, right? Uh, Brian Culbertson, all these really amazing pro level musicians, right? But they all do different things sometimes. And, 
And uh, I don't Bill Evans is another great jazz pianist. Those, but there's all kinds of different musicians. I still think it's a great subject to talk about, though, even though I, there's, there's some definite disagreements about what the term intermediate means, intermediate pianist. But an intermediate just means someone who's in the middle somewhere. Because most people are, a lot, there's a heck of a lot of people that are beginners or elementary level, or whatever. Not, they're just kind of starting out, not that great yet, right? Intermediate players are at a moderate level of skill, right? They're, oh, you're you're pretty good, right? Not bad. Oh, it's actually pretty good, right? Advanced players, wow. You listen to them, and you're like, wow, <laughs> wow, and then it's they're not really all that far. I mean, if you keep going, you get to a point where you want to start paying someone money. That's like a semi-pro to pro level, right? And professionals will vary in their abilities as well. Virtuosos are are insanely good. They're like mind-blowingly good. Um, you wonder how someone could be that skilled at level playing, right? So anyway, just a few thoughts here for you guys. Leave me your thoughts and comments below. Catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.